this is going to come as a surprise, but I really do like Sorcerer as a class. And I like Sorcerer as a class anywhere. Yes, we might have another one soon. Watch this space. But to focus on Diablo 4, for all its flaws, there is a lot of fun to be had. Building, theory crafting, testing, and then tearing through the game with the many sorcerer builds. Both that I have created and others have too. It is a wonderful class community and I really am happy to, well, push it as much as I can every season with you guys. It's really cool. And I have to say, I think here in Season 3, Sorcerer is probably in the best place it's ever been. Not the most powerful, of course. Season 2 Ball Lightning might never be beaten, if I'm honest. But best place in terms of build variety. There has never been more pretty much equally best options to choose from. And pretty much it just depends on uh, your personal preference, your playstyle, which school of magic or type of skill you prefer. Do you like big meteors falling from the sky? Do you like waves of cold? Do you like crackling lightning? It's all essentially peak. And that's very cool. So a lot of people have asked me, hey, what is actually the best sorcerer build? So I kind of want to answer that. But I want to preface it by saying all five builds I'm about to talk about, and hell, even a couple that I'm not, really are so close that genuinely you can't go wrong. But we do have the gauntlet coming. We do have basic information on it. We know that speed is going to be everything, but you do want to be killing things along the way. So we need to be able to go fast while not spending too much time next to each enemy, but every enemy does need to die. So with that in mind, let's begin. A, a quick little honorable mention I do want to give uh, to uh, a, a bit of our clash with the new Pain Gorgers unit gloves. I think it is particularly quick. My only concern with it in a gauntlet sense is you have to mark all the enemies so any spread out groups can be a little bit awkward. Not completely with the lightning spears and such, but that can happen. Alright, in at number five then... Charge the bolts, yes! Just as good as it was in Season 2, but of course with Season 3 mechanic supply instead of vampiric powers, this really gets the job done. Swarms of automatic homing bolts that you don't need to aim that will find and kill enemies for you, yeah, that's a really good thing to be able to command, and it makes the thinking power required pretty much nil, so you can focus on just pathing, on speed, on getting to where you need to be. Its boss damage is definitely the worst of every build I'm about to talk about, but bossing isn't going to be the focus of Gauntlet, so with that in mind, it's not a bigger mark against it, but in the grand scope of the game, yeah, I think Charge Bolts gets to sit around fifth, but it's still super effective at what it does, and perhaps most importantly, this is a game, it is super fun. That mix of lightning and fire explosions with the X-Files lucky hit dot stack trick, yeah, that's really neat. And like every build I'll talk about today, they will all be linked down below if you want to know the proper ins and outs, how to build them, and maybe convert yourself. Next up then is going to be my most recent sorcerer build that I've been working on and one that was heavily requested and I totally get why because, you know, I don't say this lightly, it's thematic as fuck. Fireball and Meteor, two varying sizes of flaming death are launched, bouncing down, screaming towards your enemies, and they work in perfect harmony. The Fireballs do ridiculous damage by themselves, but then they consistently summon a swarm of Meteors that do even more damage. You have infinite mana thanks to a little 
kind of, let's say, creative use of game mechanics that I hope they don't fix, which you uh, will see if you check this one out properly. But bottom line, uh, the bouncing goes so far, you can just generally fire them into rooms, into corridors, and you're done. It will kill everything that it hits, and it absolutely ruins bosses, ruins groups of elites, the pure nuke damage. You only need one hit per enemy, and that's really important when we want to kill everything but with speed. Honestly, the only real downside is you still do have to vaguely aim the fireballs and vaguely cast them in the right directions, which I know is asking a lot of you, but hey, it's definitely worth mentioning. The pure damage output of this, though, is something else. Then we have Season 2's darling, Ball Lightning, in its Season 3 form. And what a form it takes. Don't get me wrong, Ball Lightning is doing way less damage than it did, but the damage it is doing is still up there with the best damage that Sorcerer can pump out. It churns through bosses, it churns through enemies, and with Raiment grouping lets you just, well, sprint through any given dungeon, pulling everything on you into uh, the disintegration machine that is a big circle of Ball Lightnings. But in Season 3, because Ball Lightning itself isn't everything, we don't have to use the Ball Lightning enchantment, which means we can go full in with a Conjuration Hybrid, getting huge stacks of Conjuration Mastery, which then results in some serious damage output. Unleashing swarms of lightning spear, thanks to both it being on your bars and it being one of the enchantment slot, converting the crackling energy which gives us the infinite mana into more lightning spears, which is more now vulnerable from the buff to it, and everyone is stunned, and a stunned enemy is a dead enemy, it's also an enemy that's not killing us, on top of your other enchantment slot being ice blades, with ice blades on your bars churning through cooldowns, meaning that we have loads of them pumping out, giving us unstable currents constantly despite not rolling with crackling energy. It really is quite the beautifully put together thing, and I'm really quite proud of that one. You have the customary thousands of ball lightnings rotating around you, but you have so much more reaching far out thanks to the swarm of ice blades and lightning spears. And if not for the fact that you still kind of have to move to each enemy that doesn't get raimented, it doesn't have that range, so it might actually lack on speed. Now it's not just one hitting everything it kind of looks at like it was in season too, it might even be in contention for best, but I do think it gets picked to the post just a little bit by, well, uh, next up. Uh, oh, okay, look, before I reveal it, I think the top two are about as even as it's possible to get, and dividing them was purely based on which one I kind of lean towards the gauntlet with. That said, I will do a proper theorycraft session on the gauntlet, and before it comes out, give you what I believe to be the best build for it and all of that goodness, but as it stands right now, I think these two are equally good for every aspect. Tier 100, Nightmare Vaults and Dungeons, Uber Lilith, Duriel, Overworld, everything. They are just equally good at making the entire current content of Diablo 4 an absolute joke, so you really can just choose your favorite flavor of pain dealing. In any case, though, I've had to order them, so, uh, at two, we have... Pure Meteor. The U Unique Helm has done a lot, and it's one of my favorite new items, honestly, out of all of them, that Diablo 4 has gotten. It really turns Meteor into a properly fun skill with its own identity, making it have that cooldown, letting it trigger protection barriers for you, letting you play with a full set of six cooldowns on your bars. I was dearly hoping before the season came out that the Unique Helm would let us play Meteor only. The cooldown might have meant that we need a supporting skill to fire while we're waiting for Meteor, but with max cooldown reduction affixes, with a good roll, 
wall, you can sit at like three seconds a meteor, and then we use the Ice Blade enchantment and Swarm to cooldown reduce it even further, and we can pretty much just cast it freely, but it's even better because it costs zero mana and gives us a shield. It costing zero mana means we're always at full mana, which means we can use full mana benefits constantly, reliably, with 100% true uptime, like the Elementalist aspect, like the do more damage when you're above certain mana passives that we have. It really transforms Meteor into the hard-hitting, boss-destroying, elite one-hitting, just everything disintegrating skill it always should be because you're dropping a meteorite on someone. We can combine it with high crit, high crit damage, but also high lucky hit to have meteor swarm more meteors, more meteors, so on and so forth with the enchantment to accompany ice blades, and we really do get the job done. The buffed aspect that lets you do extra meteors that do a percent damage of the main meteor is huge too, and we still get loads of burning in because the meteor itself does a burning floor and applies a burn on top of that so we can x files it up which is even more damage because a fire damage x files is buffed by all of our fire damage crit multipliers and that starts hitting just as hard as meteor and as consistently it's also an incredibly tanky build because everything is a cooldown so everything is a shield it really is great and while you have to you know place the meteor on the enemy it's not just sort of automatic it covers such a large area you don't exactly have to be accurate and you never have to do more than one because it one shots everything even in a tier 100 and given that a gauntlet's going to be weaker than a tier 100 yeah we're comfortable there all in all it is beautiful fun it is fast it's different because you know it is just new this season with the U unique and and it really turns one of my favorite skills into the powerhouse it always should have been, and I adore it. The only reason it is second instead of first is because it takes a couple seconds from pressing meteor to meteor landing. Yes, you can speed that up with a different uh, skill tree choice, and that might actually be the way, and again, it's so close to number one, but technically, uh, we have ourselves in the first spot. Ice Spikes Blizzard. The second best build in Season 2, as I said when I covered it, is unsurprisingly, probably on balance, the best build in Season 3, now that Ball Lightning is nerfed. And while the damage overall, I would say, is less than pure Meteor out the gate, of course, once you've got 10, 15 Blizzards stacked up, it is going to be absolutely ridiculous ridiculous and nothing can really keep up with it and you only need one blizzard per group of enemies you don't need to aim as much because it's just a big circle and it continues and continues going so even if they run into it they will then die so you really can play in a way that lets you just run through putting one blizzard vaguely near every group of enemies and then move on not thinking about it because you know they will be killed in a second or so whereas meteor still has that i need to make sure the meteor actually actually hit them, because if it didn't, they're not going to die. Whereas Blizzard just being a permanent damage zone, they probably are, because they're probably going to chase you into it and then die. So it has that kind of flexibility and that ease of use, letting you just run through still hybrid X-Files into it, both from Blizzard being a dot itself, as far as the game's concerned, and the Firebolts layering up. It really is quite potent in that sense. It's another lucky hit crit hybrid, and those seem to be, from all of my testing and as the builds are showing, the way to the true peak, to the true top for Sorcerer. And Ice Spikes Blizzard really does get that job done. Honestly, the biggest negative that I can give to uh, this build is that Uber Uniques aren't the best for it, because Starless Skies replaces X-Files, which is an upgrade, but it's not a huge one, and Shaco gives ranks of skills, and the damage isn't from Blizzard, it's from Ice Spikes, the Aspect, which don't get improved by having a Harlequin. So it's a little bit awkward, but when the biggest negatives you can come up with for a build is, well, Ubers don't improve it as much as other builds, then you know you've still got a fantastic kit of death dealing. So there we have it. That's where I would go at the moment, but the theory crafting, the experimenting, it never ends, nor will it ever end. For now then, let me know what you think, what you're running, what you favour, and indeed your favourite overall, even if you're not running it yourself. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. I cannot wait to get loadouts in the game, my god. <sighs>
please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.